Hello everyone, welcome to the next week of Raku Challenges, week number 72, and let's look at the tasks first. The first task is trailing zeros. Given the positive inter integer below 10, write a script to print the number of trailing zeros in the factorial of this n. So for example, the factorial of 10 is this number, and there are two zeros at the end of this number. So that's the answer. It sounds uh, yeah, like clear. And let me first uh, show you the solution which I found in Twitter. Uh, uh, I think the shortest solution is this one. Basically, we know that the, the maximum n is 10. So we can just compute all the factorials and look and count how many zeros are there in each of them. And just then list them, list the answers directly and print it. So, so simple. So that's the really uh, yeah, inventive way to print this. Uh, it's possible to use multi-subs just for fun. And actually, I uh, see, so you can just list uh, all the input numbers as a junction, or you can just use these constructions. And if you will define the functions, these two functions in this order, you will also give correct result. But I would not recommend you to use this uh, because, yeah, it's it's less predictable than this solution, but this solution is really, really cool. Okay, uh, right, uh, let's go to the real solutions. I don't know if we have this uh, solution somewhere there. I didn't look at the code yet. So let's start with, uh, where are the rocks? Well, let me start with my solution and <coughs> uh, what I've got here is just, uh, so I'm taking the n from command line and I'm computing factorial by using a reduction operator with the star inside. The star is just multiplication. So I multiplied 1, 2, 3 up to n. Uh, I print this just for the reference and then I'm counting the zeros. What I'm doing here is, I'm, is just I'm extracting the zeros at the end of the string. Actually, you could put the exclamation mark here to indicate that you want really all zeros that you can find but but yeah it works without that so raku finds all the zeros so it doesn't scan everything uh, until the end of the string and then uh, tries to find at least one zero no uh, it does what it, you want and so you found this after that uh if there's nothing found then uh, you say, okay, this is an empty string, and after that you just count the number of characters in this string. So this string is either either the empty string, in which case the result the result is zero, or it's just a string containing a few zeros, and the length of the string is the number of the zeros. That simple. So let me run this program, Raku, uh, Raku, Ash, Raku, Challenge 1. Uh, it needs an N, for example, 5. Actually, I don't give any limitation, so I can... Uh, have a number more than more than 10 like 20 raku is really good at this uh yeah so uh here it is so here we go so here we have this number four there are four zeros and you see so these zeros inside the number are ignored so this is a correct solution okay right so let's go next ben uh davis if i am correct uh so uh again so the aha uh -huh, so the number is limited here the input number then we have the factorial an interesting approach so and maybe actually maybe let me let me just make a collection of all these stuff it's really interesting so how people are doing factorial computation of factorial uh right so so ben is doing it as this so you see so a reduce method is used well, actually, that's that's a really interesting thing. So, first of all, uh, there's the uh, sequence operator, and it scans the numbers from n down to 1. So, the difference between the range operator with two dots and three dots is that you can count downwards. Uh, but, yeah, there's no difference uh, between 1 dot 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 n and 1 and n dot 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 1. So, yeah, but just for... Uh, some some something uh, some cuteness uh, so then reduce so reduce 
the method reduce here yeah, just go to documentation it's obviously uh it's obvious from the name what it's supposed to do but basically it takes two operands and these three stars is the whatever operator uh, whatever code block uh and uh so it has two arguments this first star is the first argument this last star is the second argument and the star in the middle is just the multiplication operator so it basically a multiplied by b and here you go and uh yeah so it it it, it gives you the same result i believe right so okay next uh, trillion zeros all right <laughs> okay so here we have another sequence so these three dots uh, so it's the part of the sequence operator but unlike this one where we have just kind of two edges uh this is different so we have the first element then we have the block again the whatever code block which gives us the recipe of how to calculate the next item in this sequence and the next item is just the previous item so dollar kind of a it's not important uh, how you name the variable basically it's the previous item in the sequence multiplied by 10 so we just append a zero on the right side uh and you continue doing that so the sequence is like 10 100 1000 and so on until until so the last element is what it is so this is a factorial right and yeah <laughs> so yeah uh again uh so we have this uh whatever code uh with uh, so a factorial not divisible by this current number this current number is actually these uh one of these right and basically if you will negate this and remove one percent it's basically n factorial percent star right so these two characters neglect each other and uh so so basically what i'm doing here uh and this this altogether is the last number in this sequence so maybe let me maybe let me uh give it like i want to save it uh so for example uh, my n factorial is well 720 for a factorial of uh, six and let me say this sequence right uh in factorial is not defined in factorial yeah it's not new it's my right okay so it's 10 uh so there's only one so and after that if you look back at the code so there's this plus which means that we want the number out of the sequence or a list or whatever uh, so and the number of the sequence is its length so we uh in this variable we have the number of the elements here which is one in this case and exactly there's one so for example let's do it like this and let's see so we see so there are two items generated by this sequence and i believe yeah if you add like more numbers you will have more right and i believe that this also will work right right that's exactly the same so okay right and after that you just print that so yeah a really interesting solution uh raku ben uh, raku ch, ch one uh input like seven the factorial of seven is this one and this one uh trillion zero if you will tell take 10 basically so this will not the, the only thing i don't like in uh, current implementation of this is that you don't see the basically why so i have the number here and there's no mention that uh, there's no mentioning that the, the number is restricted so it's not accepted not because this is not a number but this not because uh, this is not number but because this is an incorrect number and uh, i don't see from this output uh, what can I do to fix the problem? Okay, nevertheless, so there are two trailing zeros here, and that is correct. Right, Jan Krnavek. I think it's the first time I see this person, at least uh, during my rev Raku reviews. So there are, uh, so okay, multi. So there are some tests directly in this function, uh, and I see so there's like two options. There are trailing zeros and trailing zeros of big int uh right okay so let's see so 
for big ints uh, what are big ints big a begin uh, a big int is an int which is more than 2000 okay so yeah let's let's leave it for now uh right here a very interesting approach to calculate the factorial and again so i want to copy that so we see so three solutions and three completely different uh options to compute this uh, right, so how do we do that? So I believe we want to to print this uh, dd fact uh, like five first. Oh, well, why five? Let let's print ten uh, Raku test. So see, so uh, there's an array, and it already contains all the factorials. So basically, we co compute pre computed the factorials, but the interesting thing is that it looks like it's lazy, right? Because there's a star here, we cannot compute everything. Uh, and also, <laughs> yeah, so there are, it's it's not noise. Raku is not noise language, but nevertheless, we have uh, a few things here. I wonder if we really need this flattening. Uh, yes, we need it, right? Because but actually inside the first element we already see some factorial so i believe we can reduce it to something like that right right so yeah there's uh, a bit extra work but nevertheless so and this is so for example if you remove it it's just uh hey yeah we cannot do that because <laughs> what that is uh so that's only one uh actually element right uh, uh, yeah, you, you cannot do that because you, you you need to do something like that, right? After that, you will be able to get the result. But if you have this, then uh, you've got you've got it should be uh, yeah. So see, so you've got a, a lazy uh, what is it sequence? It's infinitely long, and uh, this backslash makes the reduction operator in so-called triangle reduction operator and basically uh, it does not give you the the final result for example if you will have it like 10 uh, you will have 10 uh, uh, sorry uh, if without that you will have uh, uh, sorry sorry uh, <laughs> oh my god so you will have the factorial of 10 as a single number but if you will do it like that with this backslash uh, after the opening bracket you will get all the previous numbers as well. So you have the row of these elements for different, uh, for different uh, uh, right uh, uh, elements on the right side, right? So you've got the sequence, and that's really a handy way to compute some, to pre-compute some values. And actually, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It's like you pre-compute that, you make you declare it a constant, but actually it's a lazy pre-computed value, so it's not it didn't exist uh, before you uh, really use it somewhere late in the program. It's really really uh, interesting and sometimes maybe mind-breaking thing. Right. Okay. So uh, so we've got these factorials, so we can just take directly the nth item of this array. And we can, so, okay, so what, what are we doing? So we're just using this trailing zeros. So trailing zeros directly takes the factorial of this n, and then it, aha, uh -huh, so again, it matches. So basically the same regular expression, more or less the same. It's, I was using plus here, and the star is also fine. And then you compute, then you count the characters, right? That's it. So, okay, so trailing zeros, if it's a in big integer, there's something different, right? Uh, for big integers, we have uh, some state variable, which is again this triangle reduction, but it's plus. So, aha. Uh -huh. So, oh my god. So, yeah, polymod. So, I never understand these, but basically, the idea is so you understand now. So, if you have a zero in the end of the number, it means that there's the uh, that th th there's number 10, if you will. Uh, uh, find all the factors of these numbers, there will be, uh, at least there will be two factors, two and five. And if there are two and five, then you've got basically 10. It's also a factor of the number. And that's 
and that gives you that zero. So if you have two zeros, that means that you have five, at least two times, right? Not actually at least, but exactly two times, I believe, right? And this is something like that, I, I think. So yeah, so th that's for your homework to understand. So you see that this Z with a star, another met method operator, and then you plus all these, uh, all these uh, coefs, um, uh, and they are basically, so you see, so you are, re ah, yeah, so, and this is, you see, so it's not dollar underscore, it's just a dollar. There's some dynamic variable there, and uh, so maybe, maybe we can just take this one and print it. My, say, co uh, right, and uh, maybe up to 10. Actually, maybe up to 10 is not enough, uh, because... uh more than 1000 for example so i want to stop at least well yeah that's a bit a bit uh yeah so you need like this if you want it's i don't like this in the syntax of raco either but yeah if you know how to bypass that you're done so of course the idea is that the final number does not exceed like this is what what you want to express here right but you cannot do that because uh right you have to have the number what was there like this so the next number should pass this check and then you stop and to exclude the last number you have to do this so we see uh without it this hat you've got this number there which is bigger than 1000 you don't want that but nevertheless so you've got this and what it does so it's like uh right so this is uh what is it so the first number is one six three so uh uh i just uh, want to maybe to do it like this right uh i want to see what i, I just want to print the sequence there all those coefficients Ooh, hoo, hoo. So it's uh, five powered, like one, uh, first it's zero, then one, two, three, and then you uh, add up everything. So it's like uh, zero, then uh, five powered, uh, in zero power is one, so zero plus one is uh one then it's zero one and then five when dollar is uh, dollar is one so you've got six when dollar is uh, two then you've got like 25 plus all the previous ones so plus zero plus one plus six which is 31 and here you go the, the sequence uh, that you see on the screen right and then you do something with that but that's your homework right uh Actually, I don't understand why you, you actually need that. Ah, yeah, probably because uh, the program begin, be, becomes a bit more efficient if you will use this method uh, instead of that direct uh, computation of factorial. Actually, for uh, big ints, you don't have to compute. Well, in this program, you don't compute the factorial. Uh, so, yeah, if the number is big enough, so why spend time if you can do it faster? Right. Okay, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the task was the, in the task it was said that the maximum number is ten, so we don't need all those two thousands, right? Uh, going next, going next, uh, count trailing zeros. Jason Messer, um, and his solution is uh, right, right. So there's this n, and we start with that. And while running is more than the zero, we try to divide it by uh, 10 and see if it's zero or not, right? Uh, count if this is divisible by 10, which actually means that the last digit is 10. The, we only check the last digit here, so we ignore the, the like, second to the last. 
and to check the second to last number you have to divide the number by 10 and then check the number again and as soon as you reach some digit which is not zero you can just break this loop uh, right so and factorial factorial here is computed as an explicit lazy and you see so this is binding interesting uh, an explicit lazy sequence again we are using this dollar uh, without any underscore uh, so actually this this variable is really good for using it in one-liners which you just type in command line and dollar i a dollar hat a is a placeholder variable so basically it's in uh, the first and the only argument uh, parameter that this anonymous function receives and you just multiply it and you increment this counter in the next uh, loop well th 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 there's no uh, loop here but the loop uh, it's indirect loop which is introduced by this sequence operator so let's uh, add this to the collection it's really interesting I really like and enjoy these solutions and all right so you've got this lazy array I think actually the lazy word is not that important here because you've got a star here you physically cannot compute all the values before <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's too big uh, it should be lazy by definition uh, right and let's run it so it's uh, JSON and it needs an oh, no it doesn't need any n Raku JSON Raku J1 Pill 6 why is Pill 6 2 1 so factorial uh, yeah I believe this is correct right uh, right okay going next let's go next Raku Luca Ferrari uh, here's a simple solution again the factorial is I will copy this but I think we already have this right so yeah it's exactly like this solution so I will comment this uh, then right it uh, this is what we already saw so we just uh, match this so yeah but the interesting th thing here is that we have a number here a factorial is a number right and this uh, actually is a string operation so we uh, convert uh, uh, implicitly uh, the number is converted to a string then we can uh, make this regular expression match and here you go you go so you don't have to type like dot str there or something like that but nevertheless so yeah uh, and here is a good uh, example of using the uh, code block inside the double quoted string so you just zeros uh, is a string and then you just take the length of this string inside uh, these double quotes inside curly braces uh, so it's Luca Raku J1 I want in say like 7 and say like 10 a really good output so you see exactly uh, and you can check uh, immediately if the answer is correct and the answer is correct right go next so uh, who is that let's it's Mark Anderson is the next uh, so here we go okay so yeah this time I will not copy this because it's exactly like the previous one um, including the spaces it's look like right so there's the factorial uh, n is limited and aha uh -huh, an interesting construction was do so there's some kind of block uh, you do uh, this or this so you uh, okay so you do this or this depending on the result of this check so if there's some uh, sequence of zeros at the end of the string again so we had the number and now here this number is treated as a string and then we are interesting so instead of dot chars uh, we are using uh, so there so dollar uh, zero is a match object and this match object it has a number of fields including to and from which are the positions of the elements uh, of the, uh, the beginning and the end uh, of the string which was matched here right in the dollar zero and that's length obviously but I believe we can use just dot cares right here uh, and otherwise if there are no zeros <laughs> we return this zero uh, and 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 if uh it was less than zero ah, okay so yeah so that's the ending of the number just to make the output uh like correct grammatically correct english uh has some 
trillion zeros, right? Zero or zeros. Uh, right, uh, Raku, Mark, no, uh, yeah, Mark Anderson, Ra Raku, ch one. We need uh, number, let's turn again. So it has two trillion zeros. And if, for example, if it's seven, right? And what if it's one? Zero trillion zeros. Haha, <laughs> is it right? Uh, okay, uh, right, so it works. And it uses the matching with regular expression against the regular expression, then node. Uh, right, so there are some tests, and here we go. Ooh. Right, but uh, here it looks like we're trying to find the factors of this number. Actually, n not all the factors, but just uh, all the factors which are powers of 5. And so we divide the number by the power of 5, right? And this dollar underscore is the number from 1 uh, to the um, root of the fifth power what's the correct uh, name so it's basically 1 divided by n right so it's uh, so yeah so actually you could just use n here for but for efficiency it's better definitely to just use uh, to limit the number of checks before we go and then we just add up what do we add up so it's the floor uh, brrr. so for example if the number is dividable by uh, like 25 which is like 2 here ah but wait uh, where's the factorial ah this yeah so these are wait that's uh, I, I don't understand so the only thing you have to do is count the prime factors 2 by 5 in the factorial because half of the neutral natural numbers are even there will be plenty of factors of 2 in the factorial hence the only thing we need to count are the prime factors of 5 we have an extra factor of 5 when n is so we have an extra factor of 5 when n is 5 10 blah. then we get another factor of 5 when this number is like the third power right no, no no when n is this another with each multiple of five uh cube etc therefore the number of factors of five is okay well yeah if uh, if but I, I i uh i don't see where the factorial comes in here so for example uh for the number of seven right and for what wh wh what should i do for number of for number of eight i didn't get it so n is seven there's one trillion zero so like this should be one or, or, or what raku node uh, raku ch one bloop e. uh, so this is one and like uh, uh, let's compute the factorial of 125 in how many zeros are there so these are the zeros right and uh, how many are there there are like uh, 32 th zeros and what did we get 31 okay maybe it's 31 right yeah that's right so it's the 30 second position so there are 31 zeros okay so it works so basically this is the real n in the output and the factorial is never computed explicitly there and right okay okay that's good that's an interesting solution uh right okay uh going next going next and uh it's simon proctor his raku solution raku solution right so yeah this is uh, what we already seen so the factorial is just a function and uh the n is less than 10 and right so basically right so this match uh uses is uh, uses these uh, uh, exclamation marks instead of slashes uh, personally i don't like that but that's completely uh, acceptable and uh, right so we've got these zeros uh, capture then convert to string then use codes yeah it's it's zero so it will be ski uh ski space so yeah code codes and cars uh, will give you the same result, right? Uh, okay, so Raku, Raku, uh, Raku, Simon, Proct, 
Mr. Raku one Right, so we need number of like seven and it's one and number ten it's it's two. Right, so the solution gives us a very correct result. Okay, so Pell Rocket Solution. So uh Arna Sommer, Rock Solution number one. Uh there's positive uh integers. The integers which are positive is more than one or one. Uh so yeah, it's more than zero, right? The same. Uh right, so we've got this N and four. So here we are computing the factorial using this uh loop. Right, so it's just so this is the solution, right? I will do it like this. So this is the solution to compute the factorial. And uh what are we going next? So here's the factorial. And so yeah, so this solution actually if wait uh this check is inside the main loop right so the main loop ah so we're printing all the uh, so this n is not the input n it's just the the maximal n and we generate the result for all the things so yeah we matched against the same regular expression that we saw a few times and then we just take number of uh, characters in this string and here we go so it will gives us uh uh raku arun uh raku one uh ten all wait then i don't understand how it works ten right wait so this faculty uh is the factorial ah okay so we make this check uh so there's another key right aha uh -huh. Here you go. So yeah, if this key is uh, off by default, then ah, re really interesting. So I didn't actually see that it's possible. So you see, so it's uh, uh, what is it? Is it a pair or how do you treat that? So I mean, you can do it like like this, right? But you cannot do it like that, right? So, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you should have two dashes there, right? That's so just uh, take a note that you can do something like that. Uh, okay, so yeah, this works. Uh, at nice Raku solution number one, and here we go. Here we have some explanation. The simplest is uh, as given. I only learned positive is in lookup table. This is uh, what we saw in the uh, very first tweet. So you can just give the direct answer without any computation, right? And here is the uh, number of zeros. Here's the pre-computed lookup table for all these. So basically there's the factorial and the number of zeros. And what we're we doing, if it's not like, if all the uh, input parameters are correct, then we, so there are two, uh, Unside integers, and we are trying to find the trillion zeros. If but I, I, I wonder, so this is kind of the same check here, but there's some some addition here. Okay, n never mind. Uh, then the zeros, we just ah, so we take if the number is more than this maximum, then we compute it, right? Right, if not. Then we take the direct answer and make some output. Uh, right, so find transient adapted from count and zeros and factorial of number. <laughs> so this is what uh, where from this uh, Pearl Weekly Challenge was taken from, right? Not, but that's not important. Uh, the important thing is that we, uh, uh -huh. so again, so we are multiplying the count by five. Woo! Uh, and uh, what's that? So, uh, so it's loop. So it's the initial thing. It's the continuation. So, and this is the uh, like step. So the continuation is that this is. So if you divide this by uh, ah, okay. So uh, so uh, so we multiply it by phi until it basically reaches or becomes bigger than the input number. And then we count this floor. We saw this uh, similar solution with the plus, uh, but in the form of the reduction operator 
couple of solutions earlier and then so right so for small numbers we have the table for big numbers we have uh, raku we have the computation uh raku one so say like for 10 we take it directly right and for for example for 12 uh we do not accept that right but there's uh, another extended right so ah again so far well people are using that i'm not aware of this syntax interesting uh x right so the knight has two train zeros but we do not print the factorial of 12 because we just do not compute this but let me compute it right so yeah there are two trailing zeros right interesting uh right calling crane raku number one and here is the solution so the factorial yeah that's uh, so yeah we're making this in the loop and uh match up the captures iron list uh, take match object zero apply com com uh, then elements to count the zero so okay so there's another element uh, another uh, method of uh, com basically computing the lengths, right? So you split the character to a separate, uh, sp uh, split the string to separate characters and count the number of them. So yeah, so the regular expression is a bit more complicated this time. So we skip like everything that we want zeros, uh, but this uh, question mark is important just uh, to not consume some zeros right because uh this one can match with a zero an empty space basically right right so we have some zeros and right again so there's some uh, grammar uh, corrections for different number of zeros so uh raku colon crane raku chair one and uh like five it was four but do we use this? We don't use this, right? <laughs> uh, we just print everything uh, for 30 and like 10, uh, like take. Let's take some random thing from the middle. It's four trillion zeros. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven in the factorial of 30. Right. But I believe this is and R isn't uh, actually ever used yeah this dollar pl is not using in the output is not used in the output right no how are we so what's this dollar underscore there what's this dollar underscore on ah dollar underscore is this right ah so yeah <laughs> there, there are it's explicitly uh printing there are and this is ignored while it should be something uh, different right uh next here very simple solution one liner and basically yeah, again so it's factorial uh, with a reduction and multiplication and then we have this character class uh, wait uh wait 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 what is that? So is it a character? It's not a character class, right? Because there are no uh, square brackets. But why do we have these angle things? Uh, either an empty string, this is what I had, right? And then characters and print this number. All right, okay. Raku, Jaldar, Raku, one, seven. There's one and there's limitation, unfortunately. So, ah, you see, so by the way, uh, you see this where is uh, the where clause is using any with the range 1 to 10 that's uh, so basically that's the junction right so it matches either one or two or three and uh, up to 10 right okay uh, good uh, next uh, oh yeah that's one liner uh, so it's a factorial and this f hey where's the where's the rest it's it looks like the the rest is lost right yeah it's unfortunately lost so i cannot run this but yeah the we see the idea that this the factorial then we match the zeros at the end of the string and then we just basically print something 
Okay. Uh, right, Mohammed, recall number one. Uh, here's the solution. So there's uh, what we're we taking. So we're taking the number well less than 10 with the default 10 uh, factorial and zero count. This function returns two values, right? Uh, right. Uh, or one value. So zero count. I wonder what happens if it returns. Ah, no, sorry, 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 I'm wrong. So uh, it returns either this or that. And so there's the factorial. Okay, there's, I think, uh, something new in our list. Of, uh, so, yeah, uh, what it does, it just takes the dollar variable of the topic variable in this loop. And so, yeah, obviously we can use but why n minus 1? Ah, because we're using this n already. Ah, okay, so basically, yeah, so I think uh, uh, it's better to do it like this. Right, because, well, <laughs> because why not? Uh, right, so, and we do not need to initialize this result variable because we're just using the input variable and it's a copy, so we can modify that. Trail in zero, okay, so, yeah, here the different um, you know, regular expression. So, before the zero, there should be at least one non-zero character. Uh, but it's an optional thing, so I wonder why is it optional, because we really need it. Uh, so either we don't need it or we need it. So I think it's question mark is, question mark is an extra thing here, and then we have this time there's a proper character class, character class containing only one character, so basically why we need a character class, we can just use the character, so zero plus is the same as all this uh, selected thing. Uh, right, and there's uh, here is the string, well, the match object, and if this match object zeros uh, uh, item of that uh, is there, so we know that it's there, uh, then we just take again the number of codes, uh, the code points uh, in the in the string. Right, uh, let's run it. Raku, Muhammad, Raku. Share one, hey Raku, yeah. So for ten factorial we have this. Good. Going next. Going next. Uh, here is the solution. Uh, from uh, so yeah, the factorial is computed using the reduction operator only for positive integers and uh, the zero lens f and count zero lens reduce. So there are like two methods counted and reduce. Okay, so yeah. Again, uh, so if we count, we just match it against the regular expression with some zeros at the end of the string, or with an empty string, and then we take the um, length of the string, and and fn is the factorial, and otherwise we just reduce. So yeah, just 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 uh, 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 I don't know how to use this function properly. I have no feeling about this, but yeah, obviously it's uh, a very useful thing in many applications. So and what we are trying to reduce is mm, so yeah but again so yeah again so uh, let me skip this thing but uh, again we see that uh, we are doing something with the powers of five and i believe this works exactly as we saw this in the previous in a few previous solutions right so jeong gong and raku she one and say for ten uh, here we go. So n factorial in this, and yeah, the result is correct. Computed in two different variants. Uh, okay, two more, uh, three more solutions. Uh, so it's uh, Raku one. So the zero factorial is. So here we are. Aha. Uh -huh, again. So again. So yeah. Let me skip the uh, reading every character because we immediately see that we are computing the uh, number of. Uh, factors which are the powers of five there and that's it so yeah so again the same 125 factorial of 125 that we saw some some time ago roger bell west roger bell west raku to one ten no it's uh yeah this number is ignored uh there's no input number here uh right so five numbers i forgot already what was the factorial of uh, 125 but we can do it really quickly. No, we cannot. 
so we need space here, it's 125. Uh, wait, 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 wait. 0 5 factorial. 125. 31. All ah, right. So, yeah, uh, okay, 5. Yeah, I was looking at this 5 and I thought that this is the result, but actually the result is 31. Indeed. So, right, we have 31 characters at that in that number. Right. Uh, Ulrich Rieke uh, is here and the solution is so we've got uh, the factorial. Uh -huh. Now it's uh, uh, another interesting thing. So, uh, Instead of using the function or just the computing the factorial in line, we can use uh, the feature of uh, Raku and we can just redefine, and actually we can not redefine, there's no such operator. We can introduce the new operator character. It's a postfix, so it's supposed to be placed after the, the object to which this operator is applied. And basically after that, it's just a regular function. And just you change the syntax so that you can write it like this. So n factorial dollar $n exclamation mark uh, is the factorial and actually you're calling this function with this given n which comes here as an argument uh, then you treat it as a string and you flip it so yeah here the <laughs> the thing is that uh, what's the order of uh, like parentheses dollar flip and this uh, tilde prefix what is executed first so I believe this is first right or this is first that's your homework. Uh, right, uh, so nevertheless, so we've got uh, this flipped string, so the zeros which are uh, at the, the which were at the end after committing the factorial, they now occur at the beginning of the string and all we need is just to compute the number of zeros in the beginning of the string. And how we do that? We do it in loop and we increment the counter and we increment the, the position of the character but actually it's the same, right? So they are, so these zeros and n, uh, they are incremented together, so we don't need two different variables, variables, right? So you could print just n here and, or use zeros here, but nevertheless, so as soon as we have uh, zero, we can increment, and as soon as we found a character which is not zero, we stop it, right? An interesting thing, so yeah, so why not? And actually that's, uh, a thing to be noted. Uh, right, uh, so let's run it. Uh, let's go out of Raku. 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 Ch1. We need the number 10. That should be 2. Right, it is 2. Okay, final solution. The final solution, unfortunately, we don't have this solution. Okay, so yeah, that was it. So the solution was uh, task of the week 72 in Raku and it was about trailing zeros in the factorial of factorial of a given number n. That's it, so don't forget that there's uh, the second task, it will be in a separate video, and yeah, so if you like Raku, yeah, you can love it. Okay, so see you, see you next time, goodbye.